is Bomar Distillery living up to its full potential? Let's find out. Welcome to another episode of Eric Waite Whiskey Studies, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Bowmore 18 year old Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. In June 2018, I visited all the open distilleries on Isla, with the exception of Bowmore. Uh, Ardenhoe wasn't open yet, and I walked around Bowmore, but we didn't have the time to go inside. So, on my third or perhaps fourth trip to uh, Scotland, I plan to go back to Isla and visit Bowmore Distillery. Uh, since uh, the beginning of my whiskey journey, almost four years ago, uh, I've had all the core range whiskeys from Bomar in terms of samples. I also have an independent bottling from uh, Bomar. And I've, you know, having whiskeys over someone else's house, I've had some special bottles. I've actually had a 30 year old Bomar uh, at, at a friend's house that I really, really, really liked. But those are special bottles and not the core range. So what I really want to get into is what is the quality of this particular bottling and is Bowmore really meeting its full potential? But before I get into that, here are my notes on this whiskey. Bowmore 18 year old Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Bowmore is one of the few distilleries that still malt its own barley. However, due to distillery production needs, not all the barley used is malted on site nor all whiskey aged on site. These are features that play into their flavor profile, which is not as saline as some others on the island. A decade ago, Bowmore Distillery decided to replace Bowmore's 17 year old with this slightly older 18 year old bottling. This 18 year old expression was drawn from ex bourbon barrel and sherry cast stock. It is bottled at 43% alcohol by volume. Prices range from 110 to $199 in the United States uh, with tariff price increases. I paid in the United States $140. All right, so I've had a few glasses out of this. I've gotten to pass uh, the neck bar, pass uh, the shoulder, and it is, I would say in general, it is a good whiskey. On the nose, I get fig, dates, raisins. I get a little bit more of an earthier peat than I do, um, say, smoky or f fiery peat. And it has more of a fudge character than, say, dark chocolate or milk chocolate. There's also a little bit of saltiness there going on as well. It has a sort of a sweet character on the nose. And combined, it sort of reminds me a little bit of baklava. If you've never had baklava, find some Greek friends or a Greek restaurant or Greek delicatessen and have some baklava. It's absolutely phenomenal. But the one of the things that in experiencing this whiskey is I come away going, oh, it could have been so much better. So let me give you my notes real quick on the palate. On the palate, I get the same thing that I get on the nose. It's a little bit sweet. I get fig, dates, raisins, a little brown sugar. A little bit of that fudge character, perhaps even a little bit of mocha, chocolate, coffee character going on in there. I don't get so much of a peatiness or smokiness that you might associate with some of the more southern Isla whiskeys. Get a little bit of saltiness, and it has a medium length finish. But I pretty much get the same thing on entry, in the middle, and on the finish. So it doesn't have a whole lot of variation. And in fact, the middle feels a little hollow. It's almost as if I get something more on entry and on finish than I do on the mid palate. It also feels, in terms of mouthfeel, feels really, really thin. So if you've ever, say in the summertime, pour yourself a whiskey and it's really, really hot day, so you're gonna put it in an ice cube, right? <laughs> and maybe you weren't paying enough attention, maybe you didn't drink it fast enough, and the ice melted too much, and so what you ended up with was uh, a little bit of whiskey with your water, right? Because it just melted too much. That's what this is like. You know, when you are bringing a whiskey down, if you're not gonna sell it at cash strength, when you're bringing it down to bottle strength, you know, there's this line in which you could cross where you go too far and um, you've lost its full potential. There are a lot of bottles at, even at 40%, 43%, you know, 46, 48, 50, you know, less than cash strength, 
that are really, really, really good. Yeah, you could always say, hey, I could always want more. You know, I wish it was cash strength. You know, we could always we could always say that. But, you know, a lot of whiskeys need to be ready to drink from the bottle without needing to be sort of watered back. And so I like a whiskey that I can just grab, pour, and drink and enjoy without having to fiddle with it. But you can kind of like just go too far and you're like, oh, it's just missing it. And that's exactly what's going on here. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, and it's probably one of the saddest things I've ever seen in life. If you meet someone who, a kid, you know, a teenager who's really, really, really smart, but not applying themselves, they're not doing good, good, great. You know he's a smart kid, right? But he's getting low grades and he's not applying himself and he's kind of lazy, you know? Or maybe an athletic, you know, the person's you know, naturally gifted athletically, and yet they're not really motivated uh, to really push themselves and do really, really, really well. That's what this whiskey is like. It's something that, oh, it has so much potential. In fact, I would say this with all the quarter range. It has so much potential. You can see that they could do so much better, and it wouldn't take that much to go that little bit of extra to get it to where it needs to be at so that they would become whiskeys that people would rave about. Whiskey fans would absolutely love. So it's a good whiskey. It's a nice whiskey. It's a good starter whiskey. If you're going to have, say, a bunch of other uh, peated whiskeys or heavily sherried whiskeys and you just want to sort of warm up the palate, this does really well with that. You would never in a million years want to follow any other whiskey with this one because it's really gonna seem uh, pale. It's a fine whiskey. If you're not into something super big and powerful at the moment, just something super simple, because that's what this is like. The real kicker is, if this was a $50 whiskey, a $60 whiskey, I would think much higher of it. But it's $140. Uh -huh. It's just such a huge disappointment because I could, off the top of my head, I could rattle off probably a hundred whiskeys for less than a hundred dollars that have maybe they're you know they're peated and they're sherried that are even non A statements that are so much better than this, and that's why it comes away just as a huge disappointment. So what am I going to give in terms of a score? Uh, under 85, I might, I might go 83, 84, somewhere in the range. I'm going to go 83, 83 points, 83 points. Sort of a B minus, right? And if it was priced less and sort of a real affordable whiskey, you know, um, let's say 60, 70 bucks, I would be a little bit more impressed. But the, one of the things that are really, really obvious about this bottle is it, they've got to have chill filtering going on. Because if, if a whiskey, Scotch whiskey, is on chill filtered, they'll tell you. If it's natural color, they will tell you. So what you're looking at here is probably a whole lot of caramel coloring. And, you know, I'm not prejudiced against caramel coloring or even chill filtering, but it's like a whiskey that is pretending to be something that it's not. It's not um, a fine whiskey. It's not an elite whiskey. It's not, you know, something for whiskey aficionados. And the thing is, and the reality is, is, um, your budget whiskey drinkers aren't going to spend the money on it. So I'm planning on returning to Isla. I want to visit the distillery and actually do a tour inside. And I'm hoping when I do a visit uh, that I can pick up a better bottle than this one uh, to bring home. Now, I've got another bottle of Bullmore. It's a 20-year-old from an independent bottle. I'm going to do another review following this one on that one. And we're going to see what Bullmore really could be if they really got their act together. But as it is for now, uh, unless something changes and I hear good news about Bullmore, I will not be buying another bottle of Bullmore. Now, maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you have a different ex experience. Maybe you have a different opinion. If you do, let me know and put it in the comments down below. All right. And if there are any, say, independent bottles or distillery bottles that you know of that you want to tell me about, I would love to hear about them. Again, let me know down below. Alrighty, if you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.